G'day, I'm Tim Thompson, and I do stupid things with products so you don't have to. Today, I'm going to try and kill this. This is the Weldforce 135 ST, and it's a small arc and TIG welder. Let's see what's in the box. Let's try it out. Guys, if you like this kind of content, don't forget, hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and there's plenty more on timthompson.ag. And stick around, because I'm giving away one of these machines to one lucky viewer. There's a competition, which I'll tell you about at the end. <laughs> so before we figure out if this is the ultimate welder, let's see what's in the pack. Oh, and be careful opening it because the cables are on the top. Okay, so you get a heavy duty torch. This is pretty heavy and it looks like it's got a reasonably sized lead, which is good. Once again, a really long earth lead, very solid cable. And it looks like, yep, it's got a heavy duty spring and really solid earth lead connectors. 90% of the problems that you're gonna have in welding will have to do with your earthing. So it's good to know that in a budget welder, weld class are not scrimping on the earth. That's really good. Set of gloves. These are nice gloves and they feel really nice inside. You're not gonna get third degree burns. And finally, you get the welder. So you ask yourself, how on earth is it that they could build a welder that basically disappears behind a coffee mug? I can't wait to try this out. And hey, you get instructions. So let's go quickly through the setup for this welder. The instructions that come with it are generic and don't cover this specific welder. So this might be really handy for you. Save this video if you buy one of these welders, because I'll take you through a few things that aren't immediately obvious. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set this welder up as a negative earth. That means that the earth clamp goes into the negative position. Now that's exactly opposite to how you set up a gasless MIG which I've done on this channel before. So just bear that in mind. This time, because it's an arc welder, earth is negative. That means, of course, your torch, when we fully unravel the cord, gets set up as torch positive, and they spin clockwise to lock. Very, very simple. Now your power cord is quite long. Always with welders, make sure that you completely unravel the power cord and you don't leave loops in it because they draw a fair bit of power and you don't want to start a fire. That's inconvenient. It makes you stop your welding. The power source for this little welder is any 10 amp 240 volt supply. Plug it in and we're just about ready to start. It is that simple. Okay, now we've turned our battery supply on. There is a single button at the back. It's a rocker switch that allows you to turn this machine on. Now this comes already set up at 140 amps. And there's a few controls that you need to know about on the front of the machine. Let's go through those now. The controls on this machine are very simple, but it's important to understand them. This little dial here, of course, allows you to set your amps. If you push this button in gently, you can alternate between TIG and stick welding. It's very important if you wanna strike an arc with a stick that you've gotta actually set on the correct setting, stick welding. The other feature that comes with this machine is going to be loved by beginners, and that is a hot start feature. So it pumps out a few extra amps at the beginning to make it easier to light your arc, and you'll get much less sticking. To get into that mode, simply hold the button in for about three seconds, and you'll see that the display turns into hot. Press the button one more time, and you can increase or decrease the hot start setting. If you don't want to blow holes in your material, set it on about three. Once you're happy with your hot start, press the button and you return to your normal display. Okay, so I'm being slightly ridiculous here and I am starting out trying out a brand new welder off a battery, not off mains, not off a generator, but I've gone straight for the battery. And I suppose I've gone straight for the battery because I've had a lot of questions about, is there a welder you can run off a battery? It kind of, makes sense that you would think a small welder might run off a battery, but this is not a small welder in size of power. This is a small welder in physical size. So it's all about amps. 
And so I'm going to start off running this welder on 60 amps. Um, the sticks that I'm using are recommended between 50 and 90 amps. So I'm going 10, um, 10 amps above their recommended minimum. I'm going to use this on some rusty old uh, checker plate that I've got here set up on the corner of the bench and we'll see if it'll run off the EcoFlow Max battery that I've got over here. I'm pretty impressed with this battery, but it is, it is just a battery. So let's see if the two of them can work together and provide an off-grid solution. Hmm. I've cleared off some of the rust. I'll probably have a little bit of trouble getting an arc started on this. I don't have any clean metal, but you know, you do what you do. Okay, so test number one, will it run off a battery on rusty metal in your shed? Cause like that's worst case scenario. Once we figure that out, I'm gonna take it over to Steve's place and a proper factory with proper welding equipment and a guy who knows his welders, we'll give him a play with it and we'll see what he thinks. I can't wait for all the tips I'm gonna get after this. Sixty amps. That's ten amps above the minimum recommended for these rods. The battery's held up. That's the Eco Flax. Eco Flax. That's the Eco Flow Max sixteen hundred. I think it is. Yeah, it's the big one. And the little World Plus. Working perfectly. We might just have an off-grid welding solution. And. I'm not using any tricks. See, there it is, plugged into the battery. Isn't that cool? Um, do you want to see the weld? Well, there it is, folks. There is the weld. And you can see it was on pretty rusty metal. I had a few little sticks over here at the start, getting it going. Once I got the arc going, the weld is still running, still set on 60 amps. This little weld class, Weld Force 135ST, and that was running off an EcoFlow Max 1600 battery. And as you can see, that's still running, and the battery is on. Hello! It's on 59%. So I think it's only fair now that we go stupid and we try and blow that battery. All right, so let's take it up to 70 amps. That was 70 amps, no problem. That was just my not sticking it in hard enough. I've been told that before. Okay, 80 amps. Okay, we've blown the battery. So the limit for this seems to be, and we're, to be a good trial, we're gonna to have to repeat, aren't we? Um, the limit for this seems to be somewhere between 70 and 80 amps. So as long as you keep your welder down around the 60 amp level, that battery's gonna cope okay. This wouldn't be a Tim Thompson torture test if we didn't try it again. Okay, now we'll take this down to 75 amps. And let's go again. But this is not very good for the welder either to be turning off mid-flow, but um, yeah, we'll just do it one more time. Seventy five amps, no problem. Look, I really don't want to destroy the welder for no good reason. Whoops, that was the lead. 
Um, I don't want to destroy the welder for no good reason. So let's just suggest to you that if you want to run one of these little Weld Force 135 STs off grid off a battery like this, you need a good quality battery. These are a very good quality battery and they've got local Australian distribution, um, high power mode. Um, this little guy will go to about 75 amps of draw on the battery before it cuts out. Do you want to see the welds one more time? Do you want to pick on me again? Showing your welds like this on camera is the equivalent of getting out of the shower with no undies on, but anyway. So that was 60 amps. That was 70 amps. That was 80 amps and then die. And that was 75 amps. Bearing in mind that I am a rank amateur at welding, I just basically stick things together and more welds equals stronger in my book. I don't think that's too bad a weld that it's laid down there. And I think it would be fairly strong if we were doing, say, a fillet weld or something like that. So question number one, will this welder work off grid? Yes, within limits. If you get stuck off grid and you need to do a small amount of welding from time to time, this little guy, as long as you don't take it over 75 amps, will cope on the EcoFlow Max 1600. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's take this over to Steve's and get an expert to put it through its paces. See what he thinks. So let's go and see Steve and see what he thinks of my tiny stick welder. Steve, how you going, mate? Good, buddy. I've got something to play with. Right. All right. Let me get that with you. Okay, come to the welding bay and we'll give it a crack on this knot tester. This looks pretty fancy, mate. Yeah, it's just something we're... A little, bit, a little bit jiggering around. Now, this is the knot tester we've been talking about for quite some time, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's sort of, we're just sort of a bit rough and ready, but it'll do the job. And the idea is you're going to be able to take this to field days and so on, and people can come to the trigger engineering fence day stand. Yep. Tie their knots and try them out and see how strong they are. Perfect. Awesome. Well, what do you reckon, Steve? I'm impressed by this one. What's mm. good about it? It just runs straight nice out of the box. It runs smooth. Those rods, that are suited, those rods are really well suited to this machine. And that's a weld on top of a weld, so there's a bit of inclusion in it, but that's still pretty good. That was earlier on, the amps were too high. And bring the amps back down and go a bit slower and you get a much cleaner weld there. Now you were you were using about 70 amps on that one? No, I'm down to, oh yeah, 70, yep. So tend to, most people tend to go higher in their amps because it's easier to start. Yep. Um, but you don't get as good a weld. But there's yeah. tricks to starting a weld. There's tricks to well, this machine's got a little starting feature as well, hasn't it? It has, yeah. No, I, I think it was I think it was actually helping. It's hard yeah. to tell if I can turn it off maybe and see if it makes a difference. But yeah. it was like I've just picked it up norm and I have an arc well I don't arc weld every day anymore because we've got MIG welders and TIG welders. Yeah. And um, usually it takes me a few goes to get it going, but I just picked it up in a ran. Yeah, so, oh, that's cool. That's good. That's a good sign. And the torch is good. It's comfortable. Leads are long enough though too, aren't they? Yeah. And it's yeah. so small it doesn't matter, they just drag it with you. Yeah, well it's such a small machine. Does that really bother you at all? No, because inverted technology, and I can explain it, inverted technology allowed us to make everything smaller, and I'm assuming that's got an inverter in it. Yeah, it does. But if you look at that little welder there, there's a 200 amp welder with an inverter in it. Yeah. My previous ones over here, four times the size, same amperage. Inverted technology's made a huge difference. Yeah. And we didn't have, when I was a kid, we didn't have it. You know, the arc welder I learned on was a box about this big, and it had levers and you threw them in. To, to match up your amperage. And they were open circuits on the outside of the box. <laughs> well. <laughs> well, you couldn't really get electrocuted from them, but they did spark them, if you had shorter than they did. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that at all. I'd have one actually. Yeah? Yeah. Do you want to try it? All right, so we're going to try and do a couple of little fancy welds here, aren't we? Yeah. Push it in a bit harder. 
push it in. It's not bad for a first crank. Get slower, slower. Let's have a look. What I like about this machine is that the hot stick option that we've got on number five, so we've got about halfway. For me, getting the initial arc going with an arc welder is always a lot, a lot more difficult yeah. than it is for someone who's used to this job. And the mentoring, and I, I, I just can't emphasize enough how important it is to have someone that knows what they're doing over your shoulder, having a look at what you do every now and then. You just learn so much from the experience. Yeah. So guys, if you know a good welder out there, don't be afraid to go up to them and say, look, I'm a pretty rubbish welder and I want to get better. Can you just have a look over my shoulder and just talk to me as I do a weld? Do it every couple of months and you get better. And for a rank amateur welder, I'm pretty happy with that. Steve, thank you very much, well. mate. Appreciate the mentoring, mm -hmm. as always. Um, and pretty cool little machine. Yeah, I mean, I... It, for, for less me, than a couple of hundred bucks... For me, it wouldn't be a daily machine can. in here, but oh, when, I, when I have one in my ute... For when I'm on site, definitely. Yeah, well, yeah. they don't take up any room, do they? No. Yeah. All right, guys, so we've got a fantastic competition coming up with the World Class Welder. If you guys would like to score yourself one of these, all you have to do is send me an email via my website. The link is in the description. This is the section of the website you go to to send me an email. And send me a photo of something that you have manufactured to make your life easier around the farm. I'm going to take the top five entries and I'm going to forward them on to Daniel at World Class and he's going to make the final decision about who gets one of these fantastic little Arc and TIG welders. I will announce the winner on the show at the start of June. So get welding guys, get your entries in. Entries close the end of May and we'll be letting you know early June who's been the successful winner of the little World Class Arc welder. Good. All right, let's start making this rig, mate. You're going to let my dodgy welding onto this? No, I'll grab a mic. No. <laughs> Select. <laughs> Come here. Come on. Come here.